Welcome to the Predictive Playbook. This is one of the best shows I look forward to, and I'm going to look forward to it every year. It's Father's Day weekend, and you know what that means? It means it's the U.S. Open for the PGA Tour. And as you can see, I'm sitting here at Torrey Pines, and just outside San Diego, California. And I kid you not, the U.S. Open gives me goosebumps, and I have them now, and it's only 8.30 on the East Coast. I cannot wait for tomorrow morning when this tournament takes off. And nobody to have on the show that's better than Nick Borman on Wager Talk. And before we dig into this, uh, Nick, I first want to welcome you to the show and thank you for your time. But I want you, want you to kind of spell out what the package is that you have available. Because it is different than like you know, getting a package of my NBA plays. Uh, because that's pretty straightforward. You, you have a tremendous mix of uh, betting opportunities that is also a tremendous value. So I'll, I'll let you take uh, over from here and describe what it is. Sure. Uh, yeah, the U.S. Open package this week um, is available for 49 bucks, and you can use promo code OPEN21 and get it for 50% off, so definitely a good deal. I got uh, several matchup plays, uh, five right now loaded in the package. Uh, all those are normal, you know, 3 4% type of plays. And then I have outright leaderboard and even first-round leader selections. And basically it's, you know, 2 two or 3% total on outrights split up between uh, four or five guys. Uh, leaderboards, I got a 5% leaderboard play loaded in the package, uh, another 1% long shot leaderboard play, um, as well as first round leader, which is always fun. I love the first round leader play. It's, but it's, you know, it's 1%, it's a small, it's, it's hard to get that one right, but the, the payouts are a lot of times better than the, to win the tournament payouts. Um, so it's 1% split up between, you know, five, four or five guys at, 0.2% each. So it's, you know, a couple bucks on, on a few guys to get the week started. So definitely a different package, but a little action all throughout the week. And of course, I'll have uh, daily ads every day for individual matchups um, on that particular day. And that's a lot of uh, plays, guys. I mean, if you break it down to, you know, at $25 with the promo code, I mean, you're getting plays that are, you know, like a buck 50. You know, so give up one of your IPAs uh, in the next two days and get his and get his package. I mean, it's as simple as that. And I, I know for a fact I tail his plays and, and they've done very, very well. So uh, do yourself a favor and get on board along with myself and him and enjoy the knowledge that he has. I mean, after all, he's a PGA professional himself. And, you know, I look forward to playing golf with him sometime soon. I'm sure he probably shoots, you know, uh, in crazy numbers, but he knows the game. And that's what's important with this at Torrey Pines. I do know at Torrey Pines, Nick, that uh, the Kikuya rough, which I've only played one time, and that was in Florida, at, at uh, the players. Uh, the ball, uh, the grass has no strength, in my opinion. The ball just sinks right to the ground. I saw a, a video, somebody took a soda can and put it in the rough, about three feet into the rough, and the can disappeared. <laughs> I mean, you could not even see it. So, uh, you know, on, a, on one thought, you know, this is John Rahm's kind of home. Uh, you know, he kind of owns this course. He's had uh, the last three starts here. He's been fifth, second, and seventh. Uh, his first tour victory came at Torrey Pines in 2017. Uh, he's, you know, he's had a ton of top 10 finishes this year, but you know, he comes with a price tag, you know, he definitely is, is not cheap. So although I like him quite a bit, I'm sure we're going to learn from you that there's some better alternatives for this, uh, for this event. So, uh, let's just go uh, one by one with uh, some of the guys that are flying on your radar. Yeah. Rom's, uh, you know. I'm, I expect Ram to play well, especially with the chip on the shoulder from you know the Memorial and having that thing won and uh, taken away from him after that third round. So I'm sure he'll be ready and gear and, and, and ready to go for this this event. Um, the, the matchups, I mean, excuse me, the, the outright leaders and the the DraftKings guys that are up in the ten thousand range, all those twenty to one type of guys or less. Uh, you know, I tend to, you can really, as far as DraftKings goes, uh, and even outrights, you can really only jump on one. You know. Uh, of course, you can do several different DraftKings lineups, and but you can only really have one of those guys in your any one given lineup, um, and it, you know it's, it's hard to figure out who that's going to be. So my strategy is usually, all right, look at the top ten guys. Who immediately am I not going to bet? You know, and you start to throw some names right out of there, and it you know it could be for various reasons. Maybe the course doesn't fit them. Maybe they're just not in great form. Um, so up at the top, I mean, Rom is the guy, as you said. It just you know sucks for the price tag that you got to pay for him. You're really going to have to stretch elsewhere. Um, 
but like some of the other guys in that group up front. Uh, Kepka is one that's just it's, – it's harder to get a read on him. I mean, he's a major guy, of course. He's been in terrible form, right? He's missed three out of the last four cuts. Other than that, he finished runner-up at the PGA, so it's like, okay. He doesn't really have a good record at Torrey, so I'm struggling a little bit with him. Um, Cantley coming off a win. Otherwise, he wasn't playing great before that. finau has got a very, very good record at uh, Torrey, but we know that he just can never close. But as far as DraftKings goes – you got to expect him there on the weekend. And that's of course the key there, but an outright market, you know, it's like he he just, he can't get the win. So it's hard to, hard to bet him there, but he could be a good player uh, matchup wise because I fully expect him up there on the leaderboard come Sunday. uh, And he'll be priced against some other guys that, you know, you can find some values fading against. Um, But one guy I'll, I'll I'll mention that, you know, if you're, if you're going up there at the top and you have to start to move down the list a little bit that I like this week is uh, Matthew Fitzpatrick. He's available right now on DraftKings at 7,800, uh, which is where you're going to have to spend a lot of your your time looking for value guys. And he's 65 to one on the outright market. He's not a long hitter, um, but at the U.S. Open, accuracy and avoiding bogeys is generally the recipe for success. And he's number eight on tour and strokes gained off the tee, uh, thanks to being ranked 14th in driving accuracy. He's also a fantastic putter, uh, 14th in strokes gained putting this season. And he finished with another top 10 last week. He shot 66 on Sunday. And I always like the angle of, you know, how a guy finishes a tournament uh, to kind of carry over into that next week. So that was a great, great way to end that tournament. So he backdoored into another top 10. He's got nine top 25s in 16 starts, including five top 10s. He has not won on the PGA Tour yet, but he does have six international wins. So it's not like he hasn't won before. Um, And he's usually priced, you know, as far as outrights go in that, 25 30 to 1 range so 65 to 1 on him seems like a pretty good steal this week yeah and if i uh dare add some of the stats the metrics that you actually have taught me how to how to interpret and look at the shots gained total uh he ranks among the best uh 4.2 shots gained total overall and all of his other metrics shot uh shots gained on approach shots gained t to green shots gained off the t which uh, I would think shots gained off the tee. You got to put this ball in the in the fairway because if you put it in the rough, I don't even know if Deshambo has the strength to you know muscle it out and even have a chance to put it on the green. Uh, but he is he is excellent across the board. Uh, so I you know at seventy eight hundred, he seems really cheap. Yeah, and, and I fully expect him to be there come the weekend. And that's again as for for DraftKings, that's the name of the game. And at seventy eight hundred dollars. There are a lot of guys you're going to spend a lot more money on to get to the weekend, so I think he's definitely a cheap play. Yeah. Who's next on the radar? Uh, another guy in that range I like, uh, hasn't been, been talked about lately, but he is a past U.S. Open winner, is uh, Webb Simpson. Another guy that just has a recipe for success at this type of an event. He's eighth in driving accuracy, 13th in greens and regulation. Uh, and the stat I love the most on him, because what's the U.S. all about? It's about making pars and just getting your way through, uh, avoiding the big numbers, is he's number one on tour in bogey avoidance. So it basically means he's not going out there and making, you know, seven, eight birdies around, but also two, three, four, five bogeys around. He's a guy that's eh, two, three, four birdies, maybe a bogey. He's just good at keeping away the big number and playing to the middle of the greens and keeping – uh, his game under wraps, which is a great recipe here at the U.S. Open. Nine top 25s in 14 events, just one missed cut, five top 10s. His major starts this year. His worst finish, finish was his last one, which was tied for 30th at the PGA. But he was tied for 12th at the Masters, tied for 10th at the November Masters, and then tied for 8th uh, last September at the U.S. Open. So his numbers are right up there with those guys in that in that top uh, those top 10 odds where they're 20 to one and he's 55 to one right now on the outright market. And he's 8,700 on DraftKings. Just writing this all down. I hope everybody else is too, because this is good stuff. And, uh, you know, shots gain total, he's 5.44. And again, another guy that's, um, just across the board. Yeah. I, I color code him, Nick, you know, because that makes it easier for me to see. And they're all dark green. That's good. And dark green is is good. Dark green is also like the same color as money, so that, that's a good good call. Good way to associate it. <laughs> now I have to say, uh, 
one of the guys that I really don't like in this event, and he's a Texas boy, and he's really struggling off the tee, is Jordan Spieth at 10,900. I, I have avoidance written all over that unless you have some other information about him that would change my mind. But I think he's a guy that, uh, you know, I, I don't wish ill will on any golfer in this world, but I don't, th he's a guy I don't think makes the cut. He's, so he's, he's kind of, it's, it's depend, depends where you look at it, but I always combine both facts of, you know, what's your current form and, and what's your past history, um, you know, at a typical course. Not every course does, you know, your past history really matter, but Tory definitely is one where course experience and knowledge is going to help you around here. And he hasn't had a good record uh, during the Farmers Open. He's got six starts, three missed cuts. His best finished uh, was a, a tie for 19th, so that was his only top 25 finish. So it's not good record here. He is in good form overall. But I just don't like uh, the fact that he's coming in here. Um, so, of course, he's not keen on, uh, does, hasn't played well at, missed the cut just uh, this past year. Um, but, you know, if he can keep the ball in play off the tee, you named it. That's the, that's the name of the game here this week. He might, you know, he'll, he might, he'll, if he does that, he'll probably make the weekend. But I still don't see him just because of the fact that he hasn't played well here. Uh, really in contention come the, come the end of the week. Yeah, that's good stuff. I mean, I, looking at his, uh, you know, his driving, you know, by comparison, John Rahm at eleven thousand two hundred is the top ranked guy. Obviously, the favorite. Yep. He gains three point one shots off the tee. Jordan Spieth is losing half a shot off the tee. Yep. And uh, yeah, I would, you know, I would want to be thinking, you know, I wonder if my ball is going to go left or it's going to go right, and no matter which direction it goes, it's going to end up in that, in that rough, which is. Uh, even for a player of your ability, it's got to be a stroke penalty, you know, from what I've been reading and studying. Yeah, a lot of these guys are just going to have to take wedges and get back in the fairway to to really have a chance. Um, so it is going to be it's going to be penalizing for sure. So, you know, quickly, does that uh, kind of disqualify Bryson because of uh, his inability to hit fairways? I mean, he just kind of hits it as far as he can, figuring that he can get out of the rough like he did at Wingfoot. And that rough was pretty gnarly, but th this is a totally different world, though. Uh, totally different type of rough. Yeah, uh, I think so. I mean, the thing at Wingfoot is the course is very narrow, and what his strategy was was everybody's going to miss fairways there, right? Tory's a little more forgiving as far as width, width off the tee, um, although they do have some pretty tight holes. But overall, Wingfoot's really tight off the tee. So Bryson kind of – came out and said, listen, everybody's going to miss the fairway, so I'm just going to get, get down there further and have an advantage, which <laughs> was worked. right. Which was yep. right, yeah. Uh, and northern rough, I mean, northern grass, when you're playing out of rough, rye grass, um, bluegrass, it's thin blade stuff. The ball doesn't necessarily sit at the bottom. It's not like it's easy. It's still long, but it's not like southern grass. Um, and you know, this type of grass, like you said, the ball doesn't sit on top. It falls right to the bottom and it's a whole other animal as far as hacking it back out in the fairway. And I don't, I, you know, if he's not in the fairway, if he happens to find the fairways and with his length, of course he's going to have an advantage, but he doesn't find the fairways with regularity. Like uh, some of the, some of the more accurate guys out there. So I think he does struggle. Well, is he good enough to make the cut? Of course he is, but I don't really truly see him there in contention uh, come Sunday. Yeah. One of the other things I, I noted here before I, I send you off to your next show uh, is that the farmers, the regular event that's hosted here every year has a north and south course. Yeah. And uh, they're not using the north course and the south course usually plays at least uh, a stroke and a half to two strokes more difficult. Yep. And all four days are going to be on this south course, uh, which if I'm right, Nick is exposed more to the ocean and the winds. And I would think if the winds pick up and dry out those Poana greens that uh, you and I play on uh, fairly often here in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. uh, the guys who play late in the day uh, are going to have that that bumpy type of green, so they're they're not going to be like pool tables necessarily uh, that we've seen like at Kiowa or the Players Championship or any other event. Um, so there's just so many cross currents in this. Uh, it's very confusing on how to put my DraftKings together this week and thank God I have some models that, that help me and thank God I have you. Um, but before I let you go, is there anybody that is a sleeper in that seven to 8,000 range that, uh, or even below 7,000 that you think is a, is a great value to make the cut? Stu Sink. What about the, what about the old guy? Yeah. 
There he is. How, how do you not back him? Uh, he's. I'm looking right now. He's uh, 7,200 uh, on there. And you got. I'll, I'll throw another out there. Is is Hoffman 7,200 as well? Great course history here. Awesome form for Hoffman. Sink. You know the the thing about this place. Um, we know it's long. It's 7,600 yards. But also this time of year, they're they're not expecting a lot of rollout uh, with the fairway. So it's going to play longer than it did at Kiowa. So you're going to need to be long here off the tee. And Stewart Sink at 48 years young, still ranks number 29 on tour in distance. And he's number six in greens and regulation. His experience alone should get him through to the weekend. Um, and he's got good finishes. He was tied for 30th at the PGA and tied for 12th at the Masters recently. So, and of course, two wins this year. So he's playing good in the long, in the, in the big field events and 180 to one to win. Uh, and 7,200 for DraftKings is pretty damn awesome. Oh, I, I, I'm all over that. And to conclude the show, we'd be amiss if we, if we didn't talk about Phil. Uh, but from what I've been seeing on Twitter, it looks like he's more in a lounge chair uh, drinking cups with straws in it than uh, you know, putting clubs in his hand at the range, and that's fine. I mean, he, he's done something that maybe it'll take another 100 years for somebody to do. Who knows? But... Uh, you know, I would love to see it. I mean, it would be an instant movie. Uh, the life and times of Phil Mickelson if he would pull this off. But realistically, I guess it's it's just too much. Is that is that kind of how it is, Nick? Everybody wants Phil to do great this week. Uh, and, you know, Torrey is a place he grew up near. He's played probably more than anybody in the field at both competitively this is now his 30 i think it's 30 this is either his 31st or his 32nd start here uh he's got hang on i have my notes he's got wins two wins um several top 10 finishes uh you know over the years and he also played here a lot you know not in events as well so if there's anybody that knows the course it's him and of course you know, he knows this is his last hurrah. Uh, but it's going to come uh, come down to driving for him. If he can drive the ball like he did at Kiowa, his iron game and his short game are still, you know, second to none. So can he get in the fairway? Can he do what he did at Kiowa off the tee? If he can, he's going to be there. And, I, and he's got the nerves. He's shown now, even at 50 years old, he still knows how to close a golf tournament. Um, so I'm hoping he's, he's going to do well. Uh, Thursday will be certainly telling on how he gets going for the rest of the week. Um, but he sounds like he has been there uh, for for the last two weeks now, really trying to get ready for this thing. So I know he wants to win it badly. And can you imagine completing the career, oh. career grand slam at 50 years old and after six runner-ups, I think it is, at the U.S. Open? Yeah, I guess Usazen only has the uh, the most uh, runner-ups in the majors. You know, He has the grand slam runner-up, I think, yeah. twice over. <laughs> uh, and again, he's another guy. I don't know why he's not priced like ninety five hundred. He seems to always be there, along with Paul Casey. Always seems to be there. But uh, yeah, I you know, I know it's crazy to put pizza money on Phil, but I think I might put two pizzas on Phil just <laughs> in, just in case. You yeah, know, just in case, yeah. or you know, at least a top ten or top twenty. Yeah. Uh, and I admit that they, uh, this is not a uh, sophisticated betting strategy. This is betting with my heart just in case. Sometimes but it would be pretty wild. Is. Yep, sometimes that's what golf is. That's awesome. Well, anything less um, left to say here before I let you go? Uh, for matchup players, uh, another good way to bet. Uh, I do have one matchup that I'm looking at this week, and that's Abraham Answer uh, over Cameron Smith. He's currently minus 105. He's just been rock solid all year. Two missed cuts and 20 starts. 14 top 25 finishes. Currently on a run of five straight top 20s. Uh, he was tied for eighth at the PGA, runner-up at the Wells Fargo. And he fits the profile of the U.S. Open winner. He has got uh, he ranks third in driving accuracy and 12th in greens and reg. And Cam Smith seems to be a little out of form right now. He was a guy I was high on a lot this earlier this year, but his last two starts tied for 59th at the PGA, missed the cut at the Memorial, and he's not accurate. He ranks 128th driving accuracy and 103rd in greens and regulation. I just think we're going to see answer in the short grass a lot more this week, which should help him get to the weekend. And if Cam Smith makes it, I, I really don't see him, you know, I see him as an early tee time on the weekend. And one last question, because I'm very selfish with this. Borakawa versus Spieth. Was Spieth's uh, terrible driving of late, unless he really got it together this last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, I was seeing it like minus 110, minus 115, to bet Morikawa, 
who I think is in much, much better form for this, this event than Spieth. So I don't. I wanted to bounce that off of you to reinforce that I'm on the right track. You are. Uh, Morikawa is number one strokes gained approach, number one tee to green, and number one greens in regulation. I mean, talk about a guy, you know, his weakness is putting. Wow. No, but with, with small greens that Tory has, he's going to find the playing surface there more often than the other guys, and it's probably going to neutralize that weakness as far as putting goes. But even with a weakness, I call it a weakness, uh, putting, still got four wins already under his belt at such a young age, and he won earlier this year. So as long as he's uh, hitting the ball like he always does, he's going to give himself a lot more chances, and he probably will be scrambling a lot less. And at a U.S. Open, if you're scrambling a lot less, you're going through a lot less stress. Mm-hmm. It's, a little bit, it's a little bit easier over the four days, so I do like uh, Morikawa over Tory Speed. All righty, again, guys, uh, get get his package. It, you know, like I said, it comes out to less than like two dollars a pick. It might even be less than a dollar a pick if you use that promo code. And uh, you know, it's it's a great way to enjoy four days. You know, you buy a pick for the same price from me. It's an NBA game that's tonight, and uh, it's one game. And then that game's over. You have you have to come back and buy again on Friday, which I appreciate. But the point is that you got four days of uh, great fun here, and uh, I, I just cannot wait for this thing to start, Nick. Um, and Nick will be on at um, four thirty at Manny's Pub, uh, which is our kind of our flagship show now. Where yesterday we had six guys on the show at the same time, and uh, the banter and the and, you know it becomes a comic relief sometimes. You know I. <laughs> I forget that I'm even the host when uh, Tony Finn gets on our roll. I mean, it's just a riot. But we also give out a lot of great information. Our picks, you know, for the last month have been uh, arguably almost better than our premium picks. Uh, so make sure you join, and then you can find out even more about the U.S. Open from Nick t- today at 4.30. So, Nick, thank you very much for being on the show. I appreciate your time. And on um, behalf of Sports Memo, dot com and waitertalk.com and the break the playbook may all the wins be yours <laughs>